getting drunk. Or as posh people, posh people can have a variety of words for, pop, for drunk. You can, have, uh, you can be wellied or trousered or arseholed. I was rat arsed. <laughs> you can actually use any word in the English language and substitute it to mean drunk as a posh person. It works. Did you have a drink last night? You're joking. I was utterly gazeboed. It fits. <laughs> Drink. Are you choking? I'm gonna get totally and utterly car parked. You can say it. I mean, <laughs> you can play this in your own time. <laughs> Last night, should have seen me fucking pajamaed. <laughs> Why is it when people say, "Have you got a pen?" You know you don't have a pen, but you still frisk yourself. <laughs> don't, think... <laughs> don't believe I do have a pen. Do you believe me? You really want to help them as well. You start talking about pens you had. I had a pen. <laughs> I can see the pen in my mind. <laughs> if you had have come to me earlier, you would be writing now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes you're on the phone and people will go, have you got a pen to take down a number? And you immediately say yes, even though you don't have a pen. <laughs> we all like to play a little game called say you have a pen and then try to find the pen before they give the number. So they'll go, have you got a pen? You go, yes. They go, I need a pen. <laughs> Sometimes they start giving the number, you still don't have a pen. It's 0202. I'm thinking, <laughs> Sometimes you never find the pen and you pretend to take down the number and you never even get the number because you feel too embarrassed to go, I lied about the pen. <laughs> I lied about the pen. Can we ever get over this hurdle and start again? <laughs> in Argos, do you take the pen? You don't. You think of taking the pen. You're in Argos, you look at the pen, you think, I could take this pen. <laughs> and I don't know if this pen goes with my lifestyle. <laughs> what if someone said, have you got a pen? And I go, I have the Argos pen. Because <laughs> it's fun. It's fun to watch a girl getting dressed. Not all of it, I'm not, not going to lie to you. There are aspects of a woman getting dressed that have decidedly mixed results. <laughs> Tights, for example, is a very 50-50 affair. The first half is quite, I would say, almost erotic, a very enjoyable spectator sport. The lower leg, let's focus on the lower leg for now. Sort of pointed toe, delicately scrunch up the tight, glide it neatly over the lower leg, lovely. Glide it over the other one, marvellous. But once the tights reach the halfway point, <laughs> This is where I suggest you leave the room, OK? Cos some shit goes on after that. Sometimes you just tug at a crotch for, like, half an hour. And just when you think it's over, she carries on. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Jesus, what are we doing up here now? She's not walking around like a baby taking their first steps. <laughs> Sometimes she looks in the mirror and goes, no, these aren't right. Don't do it again! <laughs> a good book is um, called a page-turner. This is how people describe good books. You will buy a book and it has on the back, a real page-turner. <laughs> this is the minimum I expect from a book. <laughs> people are like, is that a good book? No, pages don't turn. <laughs> This is more of a block than a book. I wouldn't recommend this book. <laughs> so I went to Serbia, and they invited me to go to Cape Town and Johannesburg. And I kept telling people, I was like, I'm going to Cape Town and Johannesburg to do comedy. And they would always say the same thing, you're going to love Cape Town. And I'd go, what about Johannesburg? And they told me almost to a man that they knew somebody, or they knew somebody, knew somebody, who was shot in Johannesburg. <laughs> I looked it up online, big mistake, it's the murder capital of the world. More people are shot in Johannesburg than anywhere in the world. I tried to pull out of the gig, I called the office, I said, can I not do the Johannesburg one and just do the Cape Town one? They said, it's too late, you've sold all the tickets, you've got to go. I said, you're overreacting, you're being silly, it's a lovely venue, why don't you look it up online? So rather than going on the website, modern day, I went on Google Street View. You know when there's that green man? <laughs> when you pick him up and you drug him. And then you drop him on the road, and then that road comes up, because they photographed all the roads in the world. So I dropped him outside the venue in Johannesburg to see what it looked like, and he got shot. That's when I knew. <laughs> that was such a good idea. <laughs> what happened? What? What happened? What, why are you laughing? What happened? Was it a sneeze or something? Somebody sneezed. <laughs> Sneezing's weird. 
You know what the weirdest bodily function is, in my opinion, is yawning. Yawning. I want you to take a moment. I want you to take a moment just to think about how weird yawning is. <laughs> just think about it, because it doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for you. When you're tired, you yawn, but do you get a boost? It's not like you have a. It's not like an espresso. <laughs> sort of yawn. Think about just think, because we're so busy being human, you don't stop to think how weird it is that every once in a while your face, for no apparent reason, goes like this. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. And if you try to suppress it, you look even weirder. <laughs> No. And how weird is this? It's contagious. How weird is that? What is that even about? How can it be contagious that one person does this, and another person just goes, oh. If you're a parent and you're raising your children without the use of iPads, I applaud you. I don't know how you're doing that. iPads are magical. They are magical. They shut your children up at any time, day or night. He wakes up at about 5.30 every morning, he just runs in, Morning! I'm like, not for me, and I just frisbee an iPad. Fuck off! 88% <laughs> battery, that's you for two hours. Go on, lower the brightness. <laughs> They're so lucky, our children. They've got iPads and iPods and iPhones. In our day, we had iSpy. How shit <laughs> was our life compared to the lives our children get to enjoy today? iSpy with my little eye, something beginning with... C. Is it cloud? No. Is it car? Yes. Your turn. <laughs> what? I actually played Thumb War with my ten-year-old the other day to show him some of the games that we had to endure. I said to him, do you want to play Thumb War? He's like, shall I download it? No, you can't download Thumb War. <laughs> this is a battle between my thumb and your thumb. You know, you interlock hands, you declare it. One, two, three, four. You don't go straight into battle. I declare Thumb War. Then you sort of jockey for position. Then you hold the other person's thumb down, and then you're the winner. And I did it with my ten-year-old. He's, he's got his little ten-year-old thumb. I've got my huge daddy thumb. I thought I'd go easy on him. But of course, I didn't realise that he's been texting since he was born. <laughs> he was some kind of thumb war ninja. <laughs> I didn't even see his thumb moving. <laughs> it's like a mini matrix. <laughs> just beating me over and over again. Ah, stop doing that. Get back on the iPad. <laughs> sometimes you don't know the time, and you have to ask some people for time. And sometimes they don't know the time. And they don't just say, I don't, they don't know the time. They try to guess the time. <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> you go to people, sorry, have you got the time? And they go, no, but I think it's about two. I, I, I'm sorry, I could do that myself. <laughs> I didn't come up to you and go, guess the time. <laughs> I'm looking for the actual time from a watch. <laughs> I think it's about two, judging by the position of the sun. That's how they used to tell time from the sun. They used to have sundials. What about places with no sun? What about Scotland? They, did they know the time? <laughs> like, you have sun three times a year. Were people in Scotland in the, in the old days just going, you got the time, pal? I know that three months ago it was two. That's all I know. <laughs> oh, I'm weak. <laughs> people ask you the time, it's an odd moment, especially in London, when people aren't supposed to talk to each other, and they'll come over and they'll go, excuse me, and write that freaks you out. Like, <gasps> what? Who? Why? You? Why? Who are you? What do you want from me? <laughs> this is all going on in your mind. Who is this crazy person who's come into my life? And they'll go, have you got the time? And then that all shifts. You're like, ooh, I've been selected for time. <laughs> you feel quite honoured. You look at other people. You didn't want time from them. You've come direct to me for time. <laughs> and then you look at your watch, and even though you know how to tell the time, and you've been telling time for many years of your life, you hope it's an easy time. <laughs> It freaks you out. If it's not quarter two or half past or quarter past, you've no idea what to do. Right. Oh. Oh, it's 13. No, I would say, you do it, take it and leave. I panic. This is how you walk, by the way. My son's got it now. With your legs, I say, yeah, baby. It's just the arms get involved, isn't that odd? Your arms do this. Your legs are doing most of the work, but your arms think, I'm going to do something. I don't want to just sit here. Because <laughs> it looks odd if you don't use it. This is odd, isn't it? This is odd. Saving energy in your arms, just a little bit, but it just hasn't caught on. I mean, wh why do we just conform to one way of walking? Well, I've realised if you use the same amount of energy with the natural arm swing, but go together, <laughs> you actually propel yourself. I'm moving twice as fast as the average walker. I'm doing this now. People are walking.
walking normally, I go flying past. <laughs> They're like, what are you doing? I'm winning. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm also, I've also felt, as I'm sure everyone in this room has as well, that skipping, although socially unacceptable <laughs> for anyone above the age of six, is actually a remarkably easy way of moving. We've all thought this. You put hardly any effort at all, then you just start moving around very easily. Because running is difficult, it's very heavy, but skipping is magnificent. So what I'm doing now, by combining the two, 